Hi everyone, Trina Phoenix here. And uh, wow, today's show on Wayne's was so much fun. We really got into some fun topics and some really cool levels of discovery. And um, I have some time off and I wanted to get back into the wonderful alchemy book that we're reading by St. Germain. And we were getting into to penetrate matter. So this is where we're going to start getting into some of the, some more of the ways <clears throat> where we tap into the higher part of, of your own being. And this is um, when you get into these levels, this is how you truly start Whoa. to affect matter. My husky's very talkative right now, so pardon the woo-woos. <laughs> so here we begin to school the alchemist in more advanced methods of producing the seemingly miracles of love manifest right before his eye. We are duty bound to make further exhortations calculated to prevent the spread of danger through the misuse of higher powers. What do you think the story of the Garden of Eden reveals to man? if it does not reveal his disobedience to the divine mandates and his misuse of sacred power. <clears throat> we will consider then the solidity of substance. Matter that presents so hard an appearance to the eye is actually composed of whirling energies of spirit. When the high mind examines the nature of spirit and makes it known its findings to the mind of man, he becomes imbued with what we shall call his first awareness of the potential of the self to penetrate matter. Matter is no longer solid, but yields to the probing fingers of his mind and spirit. Its density can be calculated and comprehended by the self. And with the speed of light, the consciousness can reach out and pass through dense substance as easily as a swimmer cuts through the water with his arms in motion. The more the individual becomes aware of the inner power of self to sense the various shades of reality, the more his power magnifies. At this juncture, the astute and godly man is aware of the need to guard the way of the tree of life. Gazing around him upon the world scene, he sees a mixture of good and evil and he knows within himself that in reality you can never blend the two. For, whereas black and white may be mixed, their combination will always bring forth a gray tone. In dealing with the human self, man has been convinced over the years that it is this blending of black and white it is the true nature of man. Mm -hmm. Sorry, the bells sometimes hypnotize me. It is almost as though mankind were stigmatized and hypnotized by the concept <clears throat> that the die of sin, like a die that is cast, is itself immutable. It is to the shattering of this erroneous concept that I dedicate this rendering. Whereas the scriptures of the world are filled with the admonishments against sin, and certainly the jangle and the discord of the world bears witness to the diabolical inferno that can ignite in the consciousness of man. Yet grace and mercy also appear, and beauty 
together with the myriad and magnificent qualities of nature. How then shall we distinguish between the darkness and the light as these take shape in mortal consciousness and combine in manifestation? There are those who argue that the brilliance of the absolute would lack definition without the tonal values that dilute the pure light into various shades of gray and even black. They say that the darkness is needed as a medium of contrast on which the light can appear. Mm -mm. Let me hasten to say that these individuals do not yet have the knowledge that the cosmic law would vouch safe to them. Therefore, let them hold their peace until they know whereof they speak. For they have not considered the introduction of color into the spectrum and the emergence of the beautiful pastel hues radiantly functioning in the spiritual world without ever requiring a single shade of gray or black to delineate the many facets of the consciousness of God. Black is the absence of light and of the color qualities of life, whereas white contains all of the rainbow rays as the prism clearly shows. Let me say then that within the realm of the absolute, within the goodness of God, within his power to create, lies a chromatic scheme so dazzling and so splendid as to literally propel the consciousness of man out of its socket of mortal vicissitudes. Why then do men and women tarry in the troys of the designs of darkness? I say it is through a common ignorance and the unfortunate spread of suspicion and doubt. This distrust of the invisible yet all-powerful spiritual world by men and women is a strange phenomena, for they are so easily persuaded to give their all in a cause of faithlessness, contending that God is not the expounding and expanding upon their doubts, never seem to realize that the energies that they use, if properly directed towards a higher faith, would produce the miracles of alchemy. In these tangible manifestations of the divine power would utterly convince them as to the righteousness of the divine plan and ideal. This is true. I've seen people tap into this part of themselves and literally perform alchemy as to which I never even imagined was possible. Healings, I, 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 to witness, there's only one word for it, awe. Awe, utter awe. Sign up for that magic, guys. It is a brilliant thing to be able to witness it as well as to receive it and as well as to create it within your own self. So we do have these powers, but we've been told that we don't. So it's time now to remember. Remember what's our first inheritance. This is the first inheritance spoken of in Scripture. Do you deny your first house, your first kingdom? Go back to what is true within your codes of the blueprint of you. So, the presence of, um, okay. Oh, where was I? Yes, the divine mirror. Okay. It has always been inconceivable to the many sincere and religious people that any man would succumb as Foss did to Mephistio Felis and sell his soul to the forces of the nihilism but it is not so hard to understand if men would recognize 
that it is possible for faith and doubt to live side by side in the consciousness of an individual. Sorry about butchering, butchering those words. Uh, I've never seen them before. Nihilism. N-I-H-I-L-I-S-I-S-M. Interesting. Okay. The presence of two opposing forces creates vacillation. Therefore, in moments of faith, Individuals are able to believe in the miraculous powers of nature and of alchemy, but when they allow projections of doubt concerning their own reality to be anchored within their own consciousness, they are able to rationalize, rationalize their selfish conduct. Through habit, men use the energies of God to draw forth the elements of good life which they desire. At the same time, they take pleasure in preventing the manifestation of good in the lives of the innocent and those who may be far more virtuous than themselves. Hence, we warn of the de degradations of witchcraft and black magic. Remember the goal of spiritual alchemy is to create nobly in the soul and virtue everywhere, particularly in the realm of the self. For how can men extend to the boundaries of other lives that which they cannot manifest on their own? Here lies the great error of the impatient black magician or the advocate of witchcraft. He is not willing to wait for the externalization of his own spiritual dedication and the release of the divine affla afflatus into the capsule of identity before exerting his energies on behalf of controlling the universe. Wow. That is powerful. He is not willing to wait for the externalization of his own spiritual dedication and the release of the divine afflatus into the capsule of identity before exerting his energies on behalf of controlling the universe. Very interesting. Now this chapter is the last that I shall write in this vein. In succeeding ones, it is my intent to release some very interesting keys to the students of the light. But the cosmic law demands that I explain that the light must always be used to produce Fervent, fervent beauty of dedication to God, love for humanity, and those divine qualities that enable the soul to adhere to the tenets of the great white brotherhood. When this is accomplished, we are certain that we will have not just a few students in our class on the science of alchemy or on the science of wondrous change. Our students have come to call it, as our students have come to call it. But we will have many, and this many will also be forewarned and forearmed against the misuse of energy so that all of their earnest efforts will cooperate successfully in achieving the divine plan for the golden age oncoming. Only the few are aware of the enormous effort that is being made in the higher reaches of the cosmos to assist humanity in awakening from the lethargy of their long sleep in the realm of the human ego. The fantastic and complex force field of individuality out of which God can be born and out, and out of which can emerge monstrous forms of discord and confusion to the domain of the real self that has locked within it, waiting to be released, the greatest secrets of all time. Today is the Lord's day. Today is the day of the God self. The ages have not marred the power of him who has said, I am the same yesterday and today and forever. Therefore, be assured 
of a kindly response to those efforts which are made in hope, in faith, and in charity for the greatest master's function in this domain. To be a mortal adept, to move mountains for the sake of greed and the grandizement of the human person is as nothing. For he who has said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you, meant every word of it. Right now, today, you stand upon a threshold of fulfillment in your lives. As you realize the beauty of nobility, so ably stated by Sir Galahad of old, my strength is as the strength of ten, because my heart is pure. Let us ready ourselves now for that purity which precedes the greatest alchemical manifestation. For your advancement and achievement, I remain Saint Germain. Chapter 5, Formulas for Perception. No, Formulas for Precipitation. Precipitation, Manifestation. Not what might be, but what will be, because man envisions, invokes, and equates with universal law. Alchemy, the wondrous science of change that fulfills the heart's deepest desires, orders man's affairs, and renews the sweet purity of his original communion with the great progenitor. The concept of the, multi, the, concept of the multiplication of cells points to the law of nature that provides for a continual addendum. This law which governs the reproduction of life after its kind does not involve the physical body alone, but the mind, the feelings and the memory, as well as the pure spirit of man. Coordination between the four lower bodies and the higher vehicles enables man first to control his environment and then to create on condition that he can understand and not be hindered by the obvious illusions of the appearance world whose point of reference is time and space. Now the presence or the absence of certain factors may either lengthen or shorten the time of precipitation even though all other components be in order. Therefore, when these factors are known, they can be systematically eliminated in order to shorten the time of manifestation. The primary deterrence to pre precipitation should be recognized as 1. In harmony in the feeling world. It means you're not in harmony. You're out of balance. You're not in harmony. So, number one. <laughs> Must be important. Number one, in harmony in the feeling world. Two, a sense of loneliness or abandonment. That means that you're not connected to unity consciousness and you're not connected to your spirit guides, soul tribe, crystalline grid, all of it, your chakra systems, the planets that are connected to those energy wheels, the stars in heaven as the earth below your feet. You got to connect to everything. Start to know that you are one with everything. You may not have consciousness of it, but you truly are one with everything you see. Everything. Everything. So, 
when you're in a sense of loneliness or abandonment, that means that you're not connected. So connect. Three, a sense of smallness or insecurity and doubt. Again, that's the illusion of your fractal. It's the illusion of your separateness. You are separate, but you are out of the whole. You come from the entire whole. So you're a fractal out of the all. So within that, you have access to the all. So never ever let your smallness create insecurity or, insecurity or, or doubt. Sorry, that one was a tongue twister. Let your smallness be a reminder that the smallest part of you is the divine spark that comes from the creator of all that is. So within that smallest part of you is the most power and the most powerful part of you. So our smallness is our greatest power. So connect to the opposite end of the poles. This is how you heal. You see it from a different place. It's still the same frequency of truth and vibration and wholeness, but you shift the belief from one polarity to the other polarity, and through that you go into zero point, which is the neutrality. And the neutrality is where the healing takes place. It's in the zero point. So, so one, I'm going to say one more time real quick. One, in harmony in the feeling world. Two, sense of loneliness or abandonment. And three, a sense of smallness or insecurity and doubt. Sometimes the presence of these factors can be minimized by a simple act of faith. At other times, it may require a more earnest application to the deity and a strengthening of the positive counteractions which are designed to eliminate completely the negative influences manifesting within and without one's own world. It may seem, seem strange to some of you that I call you to the attention of these simple facts, but may I honestly say that they are not simple. For these effects of these mood energies upon the creative intent are of far greater consequence than humanity is willing to admit. By pointing out the need to correct these conditions, and making the would-be alchemist aware of the influence that they exert upon his desired manifestation, I feel that we are taking a big step in the right direction, for this knowledge applied will avoid the introduction of discouraging factors at a later time when for some the anticipated results will not be immediately forthcoming for the very reasons that I have stated. This brings me to a place where I want to amplify. At the beginning of my instruction, the need for perseverance. Frequently, the failure to persevere in the correct course has nullified all of the work or fruitage just before the harvest from the invisible world was ready to release itself into the hands and the use of the seeker. Keep on keeping on. Fake it till you make it. That's why I always say that. Fake it till you make it. Keep in resonance with what you want to see. And do not stop. Do not stop. Do not stop until it shows up. And if you get into that determination and will, and you focus, you will get it. But like I said, your own doubt, your own doubt of thinking you're too small to make these things happen, all those things that is the Satan within us. That's the doubt, the accuser, all that stupid stuff. It's time to squash that part of our mind. We need to keep it there for protection and safety, but you do not need to listen to it when it's self-talking you into defeating you from creating your manifestation. That's when you tell it, uh, nope, not listening to you today. I'm focusing on what I wish to see and it will serve me and it will serve everybody it touches. So step back and take a seat and put on your dunce cap. We ain't talking to you today. So this is how we overcome the ego. 
and we, we dissolve and destroy the ego within us. It's by the power of your consciousness. You're not literally destroying your ego. You're literally slaying it by bringing your higher consciousness into the forefront and not letting the ego determine your feelings, reactions, or creations anymore. So, and that does take some work because you got to retrain your self-talk in your brain. So, only we stop the process from the invisible world when it was ready to release itself into the hands and use of the seeker. We would mention now some of the great and vital alchemical factors whose positive power should also be considered. The chief among the list is faith. <laughs> Wayne and I have talked about this in deep faith. This is where miracles and magic really comes from. It is when you believe in it. And when you believe it, you have faith in it. And that faith will bring it into manifestation. So this includes a belief in the whirling powers that keep the electrons in vital motion, revolving around their nu nucleo nucleonic centers. This power resembles a tightly compressed almost omnipotent spring. I was talking to Wayne about this today. I see things in spirals and there's layers like a spring. Very interesting. So the power resembles a tightly compressed almost omnipotent spring. It is central to every solar system and atom whose magnetic flux and emanation while centering its own nucleus is able under cosmic law to tie into limitless energy fields to produce whatsoever miraculous manifestations is the requirement of the moment. When the individual is able to convince himself and the universe his course is right, it will manifest. <laughs> When all three agree. So when the individual is able to convince himself and the universe of his course is right, it will come. So now we have seen men who were remarkably successful in producing wrong action simply because they were convinced that their course was right, even though they were actually wrong. This does not mean that the cosmos itself is proverbial, prover, proverbially blind. It is simply an indicative. It is simply indicative of the cosmic need to protect to protect the secrets of creation from the eyes of the curious, and to guard the treasures of heaven through the systems of initiation evolved by the brotherhood. Wow, that is very interesting. This does not mean that, th that the cosmos itself is blind. It is simply indica indicative of the cosmic need to protect the secrets of creation from the eyes of the curious, to guide the treasures of heaven through the systems of initiation evolved by the brotherhood. For this very reason, the fiat of God went forth, and behold, man has become one of us to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live for the garden. Wow. And they put garden and then they put guard in. Can you see that? I hope you can. Guard in. The guards are in. Wow. To till the ground from whence he was taken. Wow, the garden of Eden. To till the ground from whence he was taken. The inner necessity of the universe to protect its secrets from the profane can be seen in the activities of the Luciferian hordes who from time to time during the long history of the planet have involved the sons of God in the misuse of the creative and sacred power of life. This they have done through psychedelic perversions, dangerous drugs, their infectious spirit of rebellion against order, 
which is heaven's first law, and the spread of chaos, often in the name of idealism. But this brand of idealism has always been based on intellectual pride. It is put forth as the counter plan of the carnal mind that competes with the divine mind, considering itself superior thereto. Therefore, if I have seemed overly protective in this intermediate course in alchemy, heaven knows there is a reason for it. And so I now say to each one, taking into account the schematics of alchemy, let us recognize that the word altar signifies a sacred place of change. Here, all change is wrought by God's law. God is law. His law does not exist without love. But unfortunately, owing to the very generosity inherent within the divine nature, which allows various functions of the law to be used by evolving humanity, it has been possible for man to separate the law from love. Thus, the more mechanical aspects of alchemy called magic have been employed down through the centuries by those who have used their knowledge of God's law for selfish ends. This was demonstrated at the court of Pharaoh when Aaron, the true alchemist of spirit, was challenged by the magicians who cast down their rods that also became serpents. The mechanical aspects of the law are often combined with tricky, with a tri with trickery, to produce phenomena, which in the eyes of God are meaningless. Once a man has attained the position of a true spiritual adept, he has developed the powers of love, and wisdom within the framework of the universal law. He is innocent of harm to any, and his alchemical feats reflect the selfishness. Then the miracles that he produces are far less important in his own eyes than the miracles of his oneness with the Creator. So now we face the altar and place the consecrated to the science of wondrous change. We must recognize the two courses before us. The first is to choose a course of action based on the highest knowledge made known to us. We decide what we wish to change. We decide why it needs to be changed. And this gives motive and power to the alchemical experience and experiment. At the same time, we recognize the limitations of man's knowledge and the superiority of the God self and of the elder brothers of light to assist him in working out his individual destiny. Therefore, the second course of action is to be aware that right change can be produced without conscious knowledge of what that change ought to be. We simply invoke from God the purity of the divine plan for the right change. In other words, we command in the name of the Lord which man as a co-creator with God has the right to do, an alchemical precipitation of the gifts and graces of the spirit that will endow the blessed son with the qualities of the Christ, thereby making him hmm, more capable as a spiritual alchemist and the more integrated with the universal plan. I have found that whenever and wherever the second alchemical technique is employed, it strengthens the first course of invocation, invoked action, and fills the gaps in man's forte of knowledge, covering his ignorance by the cloak of true spirituality. That's why I always, at the end of my stuff, I'm like, I let go and let God. Because let go and let God, when I pray, let go and I let God, 
I know that the wisdom of the God that is within me is connected to the God consciousness of unity and wisdom. And I know that through that consciousness, there is more understood than what I can currently perceive in my human mind. So I always say, let go and let God, because I know that they have even a better solution that I have in my mind for what I want to see. Like I say, oh, I want to see this. And I don't even worry about how it's going to show up anymore. I just say, this is what I want to see. And this is why I want to see it. And I feel the receiving and the gratitude of receiving it. And then I let it go and I let it, I, I let God because they can do it better than I can do it. I'm just facilitating the wish and saying, this is what I wish to see in my reality. And if it's in alignment with universal law and love, so let it be. So as we face the altar, aware of the realities of God and the potential for their realization in man, let us also take into account those masterful beings who have already secured for themselves the ability to produce change at will. Surely the assistance of those who have been successful in the alchemical arts will be invaluable in producing the fruit of our destinies and desires. Invocations and prayers of one's choice are them in perfect order. With an awareness of the law, faith in its impersonal operation and determined intent that once the formula has been developed, the desired manifestation must be released into form. We shall proceed with the business of creating change. Now, one of the most effective means by which change can be produced, and this which I here make known to you, is a deep, wondrous secret, held by many of the Eastern and Western adepts. It is through what I will call the creation of the cloud. I have been shown the cloud so many times. I've never seen anything written about it. Wow. St. Paul referred to it as a cloud of witnesses. Whoa. I'm referring to a cloud of infinite energy, which somewhat like the ether so popularized by the scientists of a century ago is everywhere present, but nowhere manifest until it is called into action. At first reading, to those who are empirically minded, skilled only in the material aspects of science and in what the sense can perceive, my foregoing remarks may seem to be just so much foolishness. If any think that I only have comparison for them. Hmm. I cannot help them nor does the law require me to apologize. For I have proved this principle many times with the greatness of success, with the greatest of success. And I think that where the great adepts do not consciously use it, then it is automatically for them through their contract with their higher mind. But for most of our beginning and intermediate students, it will be essential that they learn the process carefully in order that they can first consciously create the cloud and then wait until its appearance becomes an automated process in their being. I shall continue next week with this very important activity, create and the cloud. Onward, Saint Germain. Create and the cloud is chapter six, and that is where we will pick up. So, wow, powerful information, right? I hope you guys are enjoying it. I love sharing this with you. This, the masters, um, I literally read this information before I was ever introduced to any um, biblical uh, information other than you know just hearing the scripture from this and scripture from that but I never studied the Bible or anything so this helped me so much when to learn this information first and then to read the Bible afterwards I have a totally different view on scripture 
and it's more in alignment with this stuff. So, um, like I mean, when I say God, God to me is this universal consciousness of law and love that has the wisdom and the templates of creation for all that is. And we have access to those building blocks of creation through us as a fractal of it. So this was what I was shown through these types of teachings and my own inner gnosis while growing up and it being in communication with the Lord. And then in my, in my early 20s, working with the Ascended Masters. So I, I've been doing this stuff for a long time. And um, I think that this was the foundation that actually gave me the ability to heal and the ability to work with people and activate them, the healing within them, because I healed myself. And, and then I went to school and learned how to facilitate and do polarity work and all these different modalities. And through that, ended up more in the, um, the guided trance shamanic path. And through those experiences, um, watching others activate this power inside of them it's been, I think, I would say other than the birth of my children, I think it's the most magical, beautiful gift I've ever received in this lifetime thus far. So this is something that we can all start to see and share and activate with each other and within each other. And um, I can't wait to see more of it because it is, it is, it's worth it, the ticket just just for these moments and it they are precious and through that vibration i hope many of you will be able to a train and match that vibration within you and activate it within others because this is how this happens it's we start to vibrate these frequencies through activation through doing it doing it you do the work and when the work is done within you you have the code to share with others. So this is why we do what we do. So I love you all. See you on the next one. And up, up, here we go. Where we land, nobody knows. <laughs> See you soon, Soul Tribe. Bye.